Hello everyone. Uh, this is the continuation video on solid state. This is uh, solid state uh, part 11. And it's a very short video in fact. And in this video, we are going to talk about a uh, hexagonal primitive unit cell. So in this hexagonal primitive unit cell, we have to calculate uh, uh, volume of the unit cell, Z effective, that is rank of the unit cell. And also we have to calculate a uh, packing fraction, packing efficiency. So in this first, let us try to complete uh, how to find the volume of this unit cell. So in order to find the volume of unit cell, we have to use some simple uh, mathematics here. And uh, in fact, uh, before going to this straight away here, if you can recollect uh, what do we call HCP unit cell, this is the unit cell view. So this is the first, this is the first layer. This is the first layer, a red color thing. That is the first layer. And here, this is first layer. This is the second layer and this is the third layer. In case of this particular unit cell, if you can recollect here, there are two types of triangular voids here. One type of triangular voids are covered by particles of second layer. After placing the particles of second layer, two types of voids are generated. One is tetrahedral and another one is octahedral. In fact, the particles of third layer are covering which one? Tetrahedral voids. Now, what exactly we are going to do? We are going to first find the height of this unit cell. After that, we will calculate a base area of this unit cell, base area of this unit cell. And if you multiply these two, you will get what we call a volume of unit cell. So we have to find the volume of unit cell. In order to find the volume of unit cell first, in fact, we need what do we call height of the that hexagonal unit cell. And uh, here, simple mathematics, as I told you. So this is the first layer. This is the second layer, layer B, three particles. And layer C, again, uh, what do we call this is uh, layer C. Actually, this is the repetition of the first layer. So to avoid confusion, we can take this is A. So this is A, B, A, B, A, B type. So here, this is the first layer, second layer, third layer. In fact, uh, the distance between these two layers, if you calculate, that is called the height of the hexagon. But uh, here, first, let us find half the height of the hexagon. And if you double that, you will be getting what we call height of the hexagon. And uh, here, these are the particles of a first layer. There are two types of triangular voids in this. One type of triangular voids are occupied. One type of triangular voids are occupied. In fact, these are actually covering the triangular voids of uh, first layer. Otherwise, the uh, triangular voids of this layer, whatever, no problem. And uh, the particles of this layer are in fact covering what do we call tetrahedral voids. And most importantly here, in order to calculate half the height of this uh, hexagonal unit cell, so let us take a very clear, these, these two are the particles of same layer. I'm taking a triangle A, C, B, or A, B, C, whatever. I'm taking triangle A, B, C. In this triangle A, B, C, very clear, this distance is, this total distance, A, B distance is edge length. If you take the point here, that is point D, which is a triangular void that point D is a triangular void. This triangular void is actually covered by the particle F, which belongs to the second layer. So above this triangular void, this particle F is present. So this is atom. This is particle of a first layer, particle of first layer, particle of first layer. I've taken one triangle and this is a triangular void. That triangular void is represented by using the symbol D. Above the point D, there is one more particle, one particle that is F, which belongs to second layer. So first, let us take a, here, this is a triangle ABC. This total distance is, a, this total distance is A. And if you take a, this angle, this angle is a 60, half of that will be 30. And I'm taking one more triangle like this, that is a triangle ADE. A is a particle, D is a triangular void. And here E is the midpoint of AB. E is midpoint of AB. And here, uh, if you separate this triangle, and it will be like this. 
it will be like this. If that triangle will appear like this. So that is triangle AED. Triangle AED. This is particle. This is the triangular void. And this is the midpoint of AB. And this distance is very clear. That is A by 2. My exact requirement is AD. First, I am going to find the distance. Here, distance between the center of this particle and the center of what we call triangular void. That distance is AD. So why are we interested in triangular void? Because the particle of second layer is covering this triangular void that is sitting above this triangular void. Right? So this is AD. So this is the distance between, this is the distance between the center of the particle A and the center of the triangular void D. And here this is adjacent and this is hypotenuse and obviously we have to take cos theta. So this angle is 30. So cos 30 is equal to cos 30 is equal to adjacent AE by hypotenuse AD. And cos 30 is a root 3 by 2. And AE value is A by 2. And this is 1 by AD. And this AD is if from this it will be like A by root 3. So what is this A by root 3? That is the distance between the center of the center of the particle and the center of triangular void, which is equal to a by root 3. Now, what I'm trying to convey is above this triangular void, exactly there is one particle sitting. This triangular void is covered by one particle which belongs to second layer. So here particle F is exactly above the point D. And A and F are very clear they are in contact. A and F are in contact. So here, for example, if you take uh, the simplified diagram, so here this is triangle, what do we call A, triangle A, C, B. And this is a triangular void. This point is a triangular void. This triangular void is actually covered by what do we call the particle F, which belongs to second layer. And uh, the particle F, the particle F is uh, sitting uh, what do we call on this triangular void like this of same size the size size of this particle and size of this particle is same and obviously these two are in contact this particle and this particle are in contact so here the value of a f the value of a f is definitely what do we call edge length so that is a two or whatever it may be you can say and here this distance we have calculated now I am constructing one more triangle that is A, particle D, what do we call? That is a triangular void and this is F, particle of second layer which is covering triangular void. Now you can see that a triangle A, D, E, sorry A, D, F. What is the value of A, D? Distance between center of this particle and center of triangular void we have just calculated which is equal to A by root 3. And uh, A, F distance we know that is A because they are in contact. And here this value is half the height of the hexagon because this is, so here this is a, what do we call third layer. And uh, this, this is in third layer. This point is in third layer. This point is in second layer. And obviously this distance, this distance is half the height of hexagon. And according to that Pythagoras theorem, if you see this AF square is equal to AD square plus DF square. AF square, that is A square. AD value is A by root 3 whole square. And this is a C by 2 whole square. And a simple simplification, if you do, it's very clear we need actually height of the hexagon, which is represented by C or H. And here that height of the hexagon is root 2 by root 3 times of 2a, where a is edge length, where a is edge length, and here c is height of the hexagon, and here the relation between uh, edge length and height of the hexagon is this one, and uh, of course, it, it has to be remembered, uh, a standard result has to be remembered, it, it would be better if you can remember this standard result, so in case of hexagonal primitive unit cell, height of the hexagon is root 2 by root 3 times of 2a. And of course, uh, if you want to calculate the ratio between these two, so that uh, c by a, from this, bring this a opposite side, you'll be getting, uh, so here this is root 2 value, this is root 3 value. 
so here if you simplify that will be like 1.633 the ratio of these two parameters if you calculate that ratio is so that is uh, 1.633 our actual intention is volume of unit cell volume of unit cell so just now we have calculated what do we call a uh, height of the hexagon we have calculated height of the hexagon this distance we have calculated and if you can multiply with area you can take this base area so here height into area that is volume of the unit cell and in order to find area of this unit cell base area you can see like this we can construct a totally six equilateral triangles so totally here it has a six equilateral triangles six equilateral triangles so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this volume if you want height of the hexagon we have just calculated area of the base area of the base and that area that base has six equilateral triangles and here this is area of base of hexagon and height of hexagon height of hexagon just now we have calculated and the base area there are six equilateral triangles and this is area of triangle and the six equilateral triangles and this is base area and this is a uh, height the product of these two is called volume of the unit cell and this is volume of hexagonal primitive unit cell this is volume of hexagonal primitive unit cell this is in terms of edge length and this is in terms of a radius in place of a you can write it to r you can convert this into uh, in terms of radius volume of hexagonal unit cell in terms of radius so this is about volume but uh, if you want to calculate a uh, packing efficiency you need to find the rank of the unit cell what is the rank of the unit cell what is how many particles are present effectively effectively how many particles are present in hexagonal uh, primitive unit cell so there are different types of particles in fact in this hexagonal primitive unit cell and uh, how to calculate a uh, z effective for this in order to find z effective for this so here these are the corner particles in fact and uh, if you extend this if you extend this structure and there is one more unit cell like this i told you already crystal lattice when unit cells are repeated so you'll be getting what do we call a crystal lattice so if you extend so what happened here here there are three unit cells you can see i'm just talking about what is the contribution of this corner particle how much amount it contributes to each unit cell we are discussing if it is cube already we discussed each corner of the cube contributes 1 by 8 because that is shared by eight unit cells but the corner particle of hexagonal unit cell hexagonal primitive unit cell is equally shared by 6 where are the 6 where are the 6 if you see here this is one unit cell this is second unit cell this is third unit cell on top of these three there are three more right above one there is one unit cell fourth one above two there is one more unit cell so here that is the fifth one and above three there is one more unit cell sixth one so here you can see three unit cells right top of these three there are three more unit cells as a result the particle which is sitting at the corner is equally shared by how many unit cells six so what is the contribution of what is the contribution of this particle to each unit cell means 100% it will be 1 by 6 this corner particle will give 1 by 6 to this 1 by 6 to this 1 by 6 to this 1 by 6 to fourth unit cell 1 by 6 to fifth unit cell 1 by 6 to sixth unit cell so corner contribution is 1 by 6 that is clear and face center of course here this is in contact only with the two unit cells see this is one unit cell top of top of one there is one more unit cell so this is equally shared by two unit cells so face center is shared by two unit cells so we have corner particles here you can see here six corner particles here also we have six corner particles totally we have 12 12 corner particles and two face center particles here this is one face center this is one face center and there are three particles at the middle 
I'm not saying exactly they are at the body center. So they are not in contact with other unit cells. They are lying completely inside. These three particles are lying completely inside. If you take HCP unit cell, totally how many particles are present? Here you can see here 6 plus 1, 7. Here you can see 6 plus 1, 7. At the middle, there are three particles. So totally, how many particles are present? 7 plus 3 plus 7. 7 plus 7, 14 plus 3, 17 particles. But we don't want a total number of particles. We need only what do we call a effective number of particles. See, in these 17 particles, three are at the center, which is not shared by other unit cells. And the contribution of this particle can be taken as one. Can be taken as one. Why I'm saying like this? In the next video, I'll tell. Uh, while calculating tetrahedral voids, uh, I'll, I'll discuss that. And here, corner particles, six. Here, six. Here, six corner particles. Here, six corner particles, 12 corner particles. And the face center particles are two. Here, this is one face center particle. This is one face center particle. 12 corner particles, two face center particles, three particles at the center, which is not shared by other unit cells. So with this, let us calculate a rank of this unit cell. Rank, Z effective of this unit cell, if you take. So Z effective, the meaning is the same. And uh, based on the number of particles, we can easily calculate. There are 12 corner particles, first layer, six, second layer, six, two face center particles, first layer of that unit cell, one face center, third layer, one, and three at body center. And the corner, just now we discussed the contribution of corner is one by six. That means there are 12 one by six. Each corner is providing one by six. And face center is providing one by two. Two face centers means obviously two into one by two. And at the center, there are three particles which are not shared by other unit cells. If you take this, you'll be getting six. So Z effective is a six. So Z effective as of now, as of now, let me take Z effective is a six. Z effective is a six. So effectively, there are six particles in that unit cell in that unit cell in that uh, diagram there are six particles and the packing efficiency volume occupied by all atoms by volume of unit cell this ratio is a packing fraction into 100 how many particles are present effectively six so six into four by three pi r cube because volume of each particle is four by three pi r cube and the volume of unit cell we have just calculated that is a 24 r cube root 2. So here into 100, of course, this is packing fraction into 100, that is packing efficiency. And if you simplify, you'll be getting what we call 74 percentage. 74 percentage is the packing efficiency. Cubic close packing, which is also known as FCC, that is also having 74 percentage packing efficiency. Coordination number is 12, but a CCP, that is uh, FCC or CCP and HCP differences in the previous video we discussed. And here we have calculated Z effective. We have also calculated packing efficiency, volume of the unit cell, base area of the unit cell, height of the hexagon, half the height of the hexagon, and a Z effective, everything we have calculated coordination number in the last video we discussed. And uh, this is about uh, all parameters of a HCP unit cell. As I told you before, it's a very short video. In the next video, we'll be locating tetrahedral and octahedral voids in FCC unit cell and also HCP unit cell. Complete clarity you will get 100%. 100% you will get the complete clarity with the help of diagrams we'll be discussing. And uh, yes, this is the end of this video. Thank you. Thank you very much.